Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. Hey, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at the results from typing assignment 22, which was on the subject of summer vacations and or road trips. I think I gave this assignment back in early June, and uh, then I made a follow-up video, kind of a reminder video a few weeks ago. Essentially, summer road trips and or summer vacations, which, you know, is a pretty timely subject, obviously, because here we are in early August of 2019. Did you guys get a chance to have a vacation this year? I look forward to reading all your stories and uh, talking about them. And my wife is also writing a piece on a summer vacation. So that will be interesting. This time we've had really good participation. Also, a lot of you was able to get me a photo of your typewriter, which I think is fun. It's fun to see the kinds of typewriters that people choose to write with, especially since a lot of us have more than one typewriter available. It's fun to see what typewriter would you actually use to write a story with? Hi. How you doing? How you doing? First of all, I need to apologize for a little bit of confusion. Uh, when I first gave the assignment back in early June, I said it was going to be on the subject of summer road trips. And then when I gave the um, update or the reminder video of a couple weeks ago I said it was going to be on summer vacation so it's kind of both right summer road trips summer vacations basically getaways holidays on the road that's the theme and you guys came through spectacularly we had a really great turnout for this assignment I'm really happy to see a lot of our regulars participating again and we have a number of newcomers which is really exciting so I'm also going to be presenting each piece in alphabetical order by last name. Okay, so the way the slideshow presentation works for the typing assignment, if you haven't seen them before, is um, I'm going to present them in alphabetical order. I'll include the title, uh, the person's name, and the name of the typewriter, the type of typewriter if you gave it, and a picture of the typewriter if you presented that also. Then each piece will be presented for 30 seconds. It'll scan from the top down, and during that time you'll be able to pause the video and read it at your own speed. Okay, let's get into it. Well, this first piece is by a newcomer to the series, Don Anderson. Welcome, Don, to the series. And his uh, piece was typed on, I believe it was a Corona Standard, like a burgundy Corona Standard. Anyway, his piece is titled Silent Super Typewriter Sex. Yes, that's right, Typewriter Sex. This is a very fun story. Winnebago's, summer campgrounds, teenagers, young girls and a typewriter that's in the way of certain activities and some toe typing happens because the young gal happens to be a dancer. That is actually very funny. And I like the little chain of letters that she typed at the end. And uh, the last word was amazing. <laughs> that was a really fun story, Don. Thank you very much. Welcome to the series.
All right, our next piece is by Kevin Anderson. He wrote his on an Olympia SG-1, and that's not the only SG-1 used during this assignment. His piece is titled, How Did Dad Do It? Summer Vacations, Seven Kids. Wow, this is a literal trip down memory lane, Kevin. I didn't come from a family of seven kids. I came from a family of three boys, but I can certainly relate. We didn't take as many trips as you did, apparently, but I can see every aspect of this is so classic. And you wonder, like you, you do wonder in this piece, how did your dad do it? And, of course, our memories are always a little distorted from the passage of time. And as you say down in the bottom here, looking through the receipts and the records of these trips that you found later on, in your adult life, you realize that they weren't quite as long, a lot of these trips, right? A lot of three-day trips, as you describe it. So it's really interesting, though, how your dad was so dedicated to the idea of filling your childhood with vacations and trips and fun. And I, that is so, so cool. Such a blessing that your dad was able to do it. And as you say, perhaps it did have a lot to do with his experiences in the Great Depression and having served in the Navy in World War II. So... Very cool piece, Kevin. I really feel like I'm kind of living vicariously uh, through your childhood, and that was a wonderful piece. Thanks. Well, when I gave this assignment, I indicated that you can uh, write about a true-to-life vacation, a road trip, or a fantasy or fiction. And in this case, Michael Arau's piece, written on a 1928 Underwood Four Bank, is a wonderful piece of fiction. And it is a, a story of intrigue and a little bit of cryptography and a kind of adventurous story that kind of ends a little sad for the main character, uh, but... What is so cool about this particular story is if you look at the picture I've included of his Underwood 4 bank, you'll see a link superimposed on that picture and you'll have to pause the video, copy that link over and go to that link and there is a video describing how to make your own Enigma type of rotor cipher machine that you tape these paper strips to a, a Pringles potato chip can, then you can decode the message that Michael has included in the bottom of this story. And so I haven't done so, but I want to leave it up to you guys. And if you guys do decode that message, leave down a comment down below uh, what it, the message says. This is a really fun story, Michael. First of all, so well written, but also the whole thing about interactivity with our making our own little code machine to decipher this message. What a fun story. Well done, thanks. All right, this next piece, written by David Cornelia on a 1938 Royal Deluxe, is wonderful because not only is it a, a great brief story uh, describing airship travel in the 1930s, but something I can personally relate to so well, because I don't know if you guys know this, you may or may not, but I, I've had a long-time fascination with lighter-than-air flight, and in fact, I have this particular <laughs> piece of art hanging up in my office here that I bought from the uh, the Balloon Museum here in Albuquerque, their gift shop some years ago. Anyways, this is an old travel poster uh, traveling the gra on the Graf Zeppelin across the Atlantic from Germany to South America. And that's pretty much what your piece is talking about is airship travel back in the days of those luxurious passenger Zeppelins. You know, I've had a conversation recently with somebody who is fairly familiar with the uh, air traffic control system and uh, we were talking about is it possible 
for passenger airships to actually fly again in this day and age when a lot of air routes are sort of have carefully defined corridors, right? And the way the airships traveled across the ocean is they took high and low pressure areas of weather into account and they would follow whatever direction they had to do to take uh, advantage of the tailwinds. So in the case of a low pressure area, which I believe travels counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, the, you, would, you would take it uh, like west to east, you would go the southern route, etc. So point being that an airship, you may not be able to stick to a certain corridor, you have to follow the winds. The person I talked to indicated, yeah, there's probably room for airships to do that still. So wouldn't it be wonderful if we had passenger airships flying across the ocean? Well, it's a fantasy, and David, you've done a great job describing it for us. Thank you very much. Our next participant is Diane Cox, another regular to the series, and she typed hers on a Woodstock typewriter. And I really like the kind of texture to the artwork, the picture of your Woodstock, Diane. That was really great. Her piece is titled Summer 2019, and it is one of these great pieces because it is a poem. And it, not only just a poem, but one of these almost like a single word poem. I like this kind of stuff. I really do. Uh, the brevity of the use of language is one of the things that is so great about poetry and this kind of poetry especially one word lines each of those words is kind of like a snapshot a photograph a, it's like a slideshow this poem is and you can visualize each word brings to mind a, a, a picture in your mind and they collectively become a uh, narrative and it's wonderful I really love it and it starts with rock and ends with kiss in Big Bang Infinity Kiss wow that's a great poem well done Diane thank you This next piece is written by newcomer Mary Cummings. Welcome to the series, Mary. And she wrote hers on a 1939 Burgundy Corona Sterling. What a great typewriter that is. And her piece is titled Summer Road Trip 2019. And the date 2019 is kind of important in this sense because the story really talks about a whole passage of time from back in the 1980s when she was a young parent with kids and they had this tradition of going to the mountains of North Carolina on summer vacations and now the passage of time their ki her kids are grown and now she's still going to these places in North Carolina with her, her Subaru now her dog and I like these kind of pieces because of the continuity of the passage of time this family tradition that has held true for decades we uh, personally go on a lot of road trips in usually the spring and fall but we don't really go to the same places necessarily but I love the continuity that this represents this tradition of always going to these wonderful places that become part of your life and well done Mary and welcome to the series
This next piece is by Mitchell Farley, a newcomer to our series. Hi, Mitch. Great job. This was uh, written on a 1938 Hermes featherweight. Uh, Mitchell and I know each other through a cassette tape exchange, and this is his first opportunity to participate in the typing assignments, and I love this piece. This is less than one page, but I uh, even in the brief piece as it is, I feel like I've learned so much about the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And you really have me intrigued, Mitch, that I'd like to visit this place. Uh, this might make a fun car trip maybe next year or even this fall if I have the time. But uh, I really like the description you, you gave, how wonderful the areas, the people, the clean air, of course the Great Lakes, and the Native American history uh, culture around that part of the country. And so uh, you have me intrigued, Mitchell, and I'd love to visit. Maybe I will. Great job on this piece. Thank you. Well, our next piece is by one of our longtime contributors, Michael Kitchen. He wrote this piece on a 1953 Olivetti Letter of 22 with an Italian keyboard, which is very cool. And Michael is uh, very much involved in his local Detroit City FC soccer team, and he's been involved in that since 2012. Their first match was in May of 2012. And uh, so this is a great piece because it talks about the, the whole culture of uh, association football or soccer and especially the what you call might call the minor leagues of professional soccer here in the United States and what I find interesting about it is it really does kind of begin to resemble what I've seen in European soccer like for instance the soccer clubs in Germany and Great Britain and whatnot that real strong esprit de corps and the strong spirit of each team and I really love this story about playing out in a cornfield with very little sitting room and how the rowdiness of the fans of the Detroit FC club sort of overwhelmed the local uh, community <laughs> and uh, that was pretty funny I, I really enjoyed this story and I can certainly see the the spirit of fun that you guys in, engage in in, in this uh, sport so well done Michael thanks for giving us a snapshot of what it's like to be the fan of a minor league professional American association football club soccer club great job thanks Well, this next piece is by a longtime contributor, Diane Mayer, and this piece is a description of her trip this year when she made the spring type out here in Albuquerque, the road trip she took from her home in Illinois, and it was great to, to read the whole description of the preparation for it and the drive and being able to listen to <clears throat> hockey on the Sirius XM and uh, just the whole experience. It was very cool. Uh, we certainly enjoyed having Diane here and hosting her, and it was a lot of fun. And as she describes in her story that these kind of trips really are kind of whirlwind trips and you don't really have as much time as you'd like to visit and it all the, all the time kind of goes by in a blur but we had a lot of fun and uh, she uh, brought of course a couple of her Smith Premier machines and I did enjoy typing on them I was pretty impressed and the photo included in her uh, piece here uh, of that she took of me uh, typing on her Smith Premier it was pretty cool thank you Diane really great uh, description of your of your trip and uh, it was great meeting you Thank you.
John Maye's piece is very fun and imaginative. John is one of our longtime participants. This is called Jolly Freeze. And uh, what's cool about this story, of course, it harkens back to those classic things of road trips, which are the roadside attractions. I know out here in the American Southwest, we have a lot of those. I think the one I remember is The Thing. You see these billboards advertising The Thing. What is it? The Thing. And as you get closer to The Thing, more of the billboards show up. In John's story, it is the Jolly Freeze. And uh, so what is the Jolly Freeze? Well, as it turns out, it gives you a super cold brain freeze. And I was actually thinking when I was first reading the story that maybe the people that was passing him in the opposite lane driving erratically maybe there was some alcohol or something in the jolly freeze but no it turns out it's a brain freeze very cold icy drink but what's really fun about john's story is he's using a uh, typewriters as a, an, a venue for travel. In other words, the typewriters are the vehicles. He was steering in the leather seat of his 1975 Olympia Traveler Deluxe, right? And then later down here, of course, um, he talks again about driving with the Olympia Traveler Deluxe. And it's really fun, a fun story, imaginative story, John. You did a great job, and I love it. Thank you. Well, that's the end of part one of the results from typing assignment number 22. The rest of the slideshow is in part two, which will be posted here uh, probably uh, tomorrow. So, hope you enjoyed part one. Part two is coming up next.